Well, welcome everyone to Faith Love Fellowship. We are delighted to have you. Those of you that are in the building, we thank you for coming out. And uh, those that are watching us on Facebook Live, we are uh, privileged and honored to be able to speak into your life and to share with you the, the wondrous gospel of our Lord and our Savior, our Lord Jesus, the Word of God. Amen. Um, we're going to pray and then we're going to jump right in. We are in James chapter 2. And uh, we might back up just a little bit to remind you what we've been talking about, but uh, let's pray together and let's, uh, let's enter in. Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you for your peace and for your presence here tonight. We thank you for signs and wonders, miracles following the preaching of your word, because it's all by your word that we are healed. We are, we are set free. We are delivered. We are encouraged. We are strengthened. We receive wisdom. We receive blessing in every area of our life, Lord. We just say thank you, thank you, thank you for this time that we uh, are privileged to spend together with you. We believe with all of our hearts that it's going to do us wonderfully good. And we are excited about uh, the deposits of faith and encouragement and, and blessing that you have for us here tonight. We thank you always. We praise you. Be with those that are watching these here in the church. And, and uh, Lord, to you be all the glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So, James chapter 2. As we started out by saying, James is the New Testament book of wisdom. So um, as you read your Bible, you should spend extra time in the book of Proverbs, and you should spend extra time in the book of James. So if you like to read uh, uh, you know, the Bible and you want to do a New Old Testament um, chapter, a New Testament chapter, uh, you, know, you, you should always, I recommend it highly, to read a chapter of Proverbs and read a chapter of James. Um, Proverbs is 31, so you'll read the whole book in a month. Uh, and James is only five chapters, so you can read it five times, amen? And so uh, it's, it'll do you good because it's filled with wisdom from on high. And God wants us to have knowledge. God wants us to have, you know, knowledge. But uh, knowledge uh, not acted upon uh, pretty much is dead. The Bible says faith without works is dead. And uh, so we can have all the faith uh, to move mountains, it says, but without love, so, you know, wisdom tells us that we have to make sure that our love walk is, is settled. We are in a family of love. God is love. And so, you know, that's what the Word of God brings to our remembrance, uh, to check on us, to make sure, are you walking in love? And, and uh, here, a, a lot of what we're talking about in James is talking about your tongue. It's talking about what are you saying? And uh, you, you know, you, you, uh, you're sowing, so to speak, into your future by the words of your mouth. And uh, so that's why the Bible says in, in, in Joshua, where we've been reading on Sunday, that uh, nothing else should come out of your mouth but the word of God, because you're sowing into your future. So, you, you know, it's, it's uh, have people can pray for healing, for instance, but if all they're, they're saying all the time is, is I, I feel this and, and, and this is what, you know, is, is happening in my body or, or this is how I'm feeling or this is what they say and, and spend a lot of time on, you know, MD on, on their computer. I mean, it's contradicting the, the, your faith. And uh, so faith, as I said, without works is dead, but faith with works, hallelujah, faith with works that are following brings the blessing. Amen. So uh, we are talking about, uh, let's jump back into chapter one, verse 22. Amen. Um, uh, 21, for instance, let's start back. I know the King James is a little uh, awkward with its words, but uh, we are talking about words. This is what he's talking about. We're talking about words. And it says um, that, uh, uh, you know, verse 18, of his own will, he begat us with the word of truth. And here in 21, he says, wherefore, because you have been uh, um, uh, begat or born, amen, of God by his word, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word. So lay aside all God calls, you know, words that that are, are that are based on what we see and what we feel. He calls that filthiness, and he tells us lay it aside. You know, 
I, I can't do it, or it's too big, or it's too hard, or, or I'm, I'm totally led by my feelings, and, and I'm totally led by, by what I see. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Amen? And, and hallelujah. And, and so, you know, the, the, he says, lay it all aside. And superfluity of naughtiness, the, you know, the, the, the array, the, 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 you know, the, the, the whole range of naughtiness. And God considers that when, you're, when your mouth doesn't line up with his word. God considers that filthiness and naughtiness. And so it's up to us to go back and take a look at how what's coming out of our mouths. Amen? And if it's defeat and fear and doubt and unbelief and what the devil's saying and what people, you know, that don't know Jesus are saying, and if we're just, you know, hearing that and then speaking that out of our mouth, we're, we're hurting ourselves. And that's why here in the book of James, a book of wisdom tells us, stop. Don't do that. Hallelujah. Uh, he goes on, he says here, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Now, you know, you know the science experiment. If you have a glass that's empty, it's actually not empty, it has air in it, correct? But if you pour water into that glass, you don't have to do anything about the air. The, 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 the water is greater and it will push the air out of the glass and the glass, you can fill it to the top. So now the glass is not full of air anymore, it's full of water. Something has displaced the air. Are you with me? And so much the same way, that's why the Bible says, our motto of scripture is, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So as we, we don't have to worry about wrong thinking. We don't have to worry about fear and, and doubt and unbelief. Just pour the word in. Amen? And as you pour the word in, it has the ability, it's, it's greater than the doubt and the fear and all this other stuff. And you just keep pouring the word in until you're filled with the word. Hallelujah. And this is what the book of James is saying. If, you, if you're tired of of the seesaw, if you're tired of the roller coaster, if you're tired of, of, of you know, living below what God says you can live in, it, it's time to start change, you know, changing what you're saying. But you can't do that from the outside in. Just start putting the word in. Just start pouring the word in in abundance. Amen. And then as you continue to pour the word in, it's just natural. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. Faith comes by hearing. And after a little while, it'll change the way you think. It'll change the way you speak. It'll change what your expectation of what you're expecting. Hallelujah. And it'll begin to it'll begin to rise up and speak against your feelings and and and, uh, and 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 how what people are saying that don't know Jesus and it'll just rise up amen it'll defend you it'll it'll strengthen you it'll it encourage you so he says here notice again which is able to save your soul our soul is our mind our will and our emotions and the engrafted word of god if we receive it with meekness which means in a teachable spirit you know uh, it's very difficult to teach somebody who knows it all if they think that, you know, I know better, I know it all, I don't need anybody to teach me, they're, they're going to have difficulty in their life because God knows better. And God's ways are perfect. Amen? And he's righteous altogether. Hallelujah. So uh, his way is the right way. Hallelujah. So that's why he says here, uh, verse 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So we're not doing the word, but only hearing it. We're deceiving ourselves. And, and, and I'm not speaking about you. So, you know, I'm not talking directly to you. I'm just sharing what the gospel says. But there are a lot of people out there that are deceiving themselves because they're not obeying this. They're hearers. They've heard message after message after message after message. You know, some of them come to church and they hear messages and they go and they do just exactly like it's about to say in the next verse is they forget everything. They couldn't tell you 10 minutes after the service what the, what the message was about. They took no notes, didn't turn in their Bibles. You know, the Bible says you, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you'll be 
you'll be filled. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you seek me with your whole heart, you'll find me. He's not distant. He's not trying to separate himself. He wants it. But he says, you have to seek me diligently. You have to seek me with all your heart. With a broken and, contra and, and contrite spirit, you, you come and you say, Lord, I'm hungry for you. I want to know more. I don't know it all. I cannot do it by myself. Hallelujah. And that's when he comes in grace and mercy and he brings you the word. He reminds you of, of the word, of how you're supposed to be thinking and, 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 and acting and reacting. Hallelujah. And, uh, and we, we grow. Amen. So verse 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. Verse 23, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself and goes his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So what God's trying to speak into people's lives, you've got to get a hold of it. You've got to, you've got to desire it. You've got to want it. You've got to, to receive it. Amen. And, um, and so uh, then he continues. You know, it, it may sound difficult, but it's not. This is, this is the path of, of, a, of a wonderful, blessed life, a life of contentment, a life of, of, of uh, fellowship with God in right relationship with God. Amen. And uh, to me, it's certainly worth it. Certainly worth it. Absolutely worth it. So notice he says here, uh, verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man or woman shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. Blessed in his life. Blessed in her life. Are you with me? Hallelujah. It says here, for whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. What is the perfect law of liberty? The word of God. Amen. Who, whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. Notice, being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen? Verse 26, I told you that uh, we're talking about words. And, and, and so we have been reminded, we have been, in some cases, scolded, but that's good. The Word of God is, is there to help us. Amen? It's for, it's for reproof, it's for correction, doctrine, and for instruction. And all four of them are to make us perfect. That's what uh, Timothy says. Amen? Uh, that all four of them are profitable to make the man and woman of God perfect and, and, and established in all of, your, all of their ways. Hallelujah. So um, even when the Word of God is, is, um, is uh, correcting us, it's for our benefit, so receive it. Amen. Don't don't get yourself in a dander. Don't don't get your you know defenses up and everything else. You're, we should never raise our defenses against Almighty God because even if His Word corrects us, it's for our benefit. So receive it. Amen. With meekness, teachableness, the engrafted Word of God that can save my soul. He 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 wants to give me the answer that I've been crying out for. Lord, how do I how do I get victory? How do I stop sinning? How do I turn away from things that continue to, to trip me up and, and cause me to be, you know, uh, less than what you desire for me? And he says, This is how you do it. This is exactly how you do it. Amen. You put the word in, you put the word in, and not only put it in, but do what it says. Amen. Hallelujah. So notice it says here, but whoso, hallelujah, looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, continueth, 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 amen, every day, constantly, all the time, as much time as you can put into it, glory to God, he being or she, not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man, woman shall be blessed in his deed. Then verse 26, if any man, of course, woman too, ready, if any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. In other words, it's useless. It's empty. Now, none of us want that, correct? So the Word of God says that we have to put the Word of God in continually. It's very much what Joshua says. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but meditate night and day. Don't turn to the right or to the left. You'll make your way prosperous. you have good success. Amen. Observe to do. Hallelujah. 
So here, it says here, if any man among you seem to be religious and does and bridleth not his tongue, in other words, control the words coming out of your mouth. It says here, but deceives his own heart. Deceives his own heart. This man's religion is vain. So an indication of, of the path of spiritual maturity is to guard your mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if, if what's coming out of our mouth is corrupt and perverse, then we better check our hearts. We better check and see what's in our hearts. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it's a good indication, you know. I can't tell by, by looking at me. You, Renee knows better than me. But I can't tell by looking at me whether or not my blood is flowing properly in my body. But I, I have a way. I can feel my pulse. And I can feel, oh, look at that. My heart is beating. I can feel my pulse. Are you with me? Well, this is how we feel our pulse. What's coming out of your mouth? So I can tell the condition of my heart. Amen? By what's coming out of my mouth. It's very much like taking your pulse. And this is the, the job of a pastor. Amen? To, to help you to check your pulse. And make sure that your heart is, is where it needs to be. Amen? A, a pastor is basically just an under-shepherd of the Lord. But that is the Lord Jesus' you know, focus. That we would be changed from the inside out. Hallelujah. Be changed by the renewing of our mind. Glory to God. By spending time in this, this perfect law of liberty. And then uh, not being a forgetful hearer but a doer. And as we continue to pour the word in and continue to obey the word of God, it will begin the process of renewing our mind. And then it'll drop down into our hearts. Amen. The word of God will become reality to us, revelation, knowledge to us. And then it'll just start flowing out of our mouths. Amen. And, and when the word of God is in our hearts in abundance and it's flowing out of our mouths in abundance, how many know that's a healthy human being? That's a person who's blessed and a blessing to everybody they come into contact with, correct? And so notice it says here, verse 27, and then we'll go to chapter 2, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world and to keep himself, herself, unspotted from the world. It's not in your mind. It's not in your heart. It's not in your, in your, in your, in your mouth. It's not in your attitude. It's not in your motive. Are you with me? We have been born again. We have been delivered from the powers of darkness and translated into the kingdom of the Son of His love. And we live by a completely different plan, completely different set of, 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 um, of precedence. Amen? Who is, our, who is our master? Is our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're to think His thoughts and, and, and have His heart. The Bible says this, let this mind be in you to have His mind. How do you have the mind of Christ? The Word of God. He is the Word of God. Are you with me? So this is what he's saying, you know, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Amen? Now, Pastor Nick is certainly gracious because I expect grace, merciful because I, I, I'm grateful for mercy, and it is not an, um, an instant work, but it is something that we need to set our sights on and allow it to have its way in our lives, amen, and grow in this grace. The Bible says that we go from glory to glory. We're, we're not supposed to necessarily, and if those of you that are watching, you know, if this describes your life, I'm trying to help you tonight. It doesn't have to describe your life. You can, you can have a different life if you will make the proper decisions, amen? But, you know, life is not supposed to be a roller coaster. 
of up and down. It's not supposed to be two steps forward, three steps back. That's not the way life is supposed to be. We're supposed to be going from glory to glory. Knowledge of God, obedience to his word, pleasing him in our, all of our ways, and renewing our minds so that every day we're getting, we're getting stronger in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Amen? Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he'll direct your path. That's supposed to be an ongoing thing. Amen? Uh, Psalm 23, you know it, you all probably love it. Psalm 23, I like to say, is a, pr a present progressive psalm. In other words, it's always new, it's always fresh. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me, he guides me. Amen? Psalm 91 is the protection psalm. Same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and as we renew our mind to it, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, that goodness and mercy follow me everywhere I go. I'm a living, breathing, walking blessing. Just like Jesus on the earth. Amen? That's our calling, nothing less. Hallelujah. And, uh, and so there are some qualifications that we need to check on ourselves. It's like our pulse. And if you don't meet the conditions, don't be condemned. Don't feel as though, well, there's no hope, there's no sense in trying anymore. No, apply yourself to what the Word says. Put the word in, amen, and let the word have its perfect work. You just remain teachable. You remain open to the, to the spirit of God and, 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 and to his word and allow the word of God to be the final authority in your life, amen? And as you put the word in, it will build your faith. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will begin to speak. And, and you'll, you'll see... A, a radical difference, amen, to what God has originally called and created us to how we are to live, amen, to be Christ-like, to be like Jesus, followers of Jesus. So, amen, uh, chapter 2, let's continue. My brethren, my brothers and sisters, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons, amen? For if there come into your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, the King James, sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Now, here he's reprimanding you no know, behavior. Behavior is affected by the Word of God, changes how we think. Amen? And as it changes how we think, it changes how we act, it changes what we say. Are you listening? There are many that would say before they were born again, they didn't really care about other people. They didn't really care whether they lived or died, whether they were happy or not. It just was, you know, take care of me, make sure I'm good, make sure I'm, I'm comfortable, make sure I have my needs met. That's the way normally in the world. But when you get born again, when you receive Jesus into your heart, God, the Bible says, he deposits the love of God. It's been shed abroad in our hearts. Now we're different. Now, we, we, now some people are born with a more compassionate heart different gifts and abilities that God deposits in people's lives, you know, before the foundation of the world. Some people are given to hospitality. It's just, that's part of their nature. Other people are given to generosity. It's just part of their nature. And other people are, are very patient when it comes to, you know, dealing with troubled people in difficult situations. There are certain giftings that God has put into us as individuals. Thank God for those giftings. Amen. Uh, but God wants us, in a manner of speaking, to be well-rounded as well and not only focus on that gift, but, but, but be, be, be fruitful in that gift. Amen. Hallelujah. And thank God for, for that gift. Sometimes it describes, why am I always, you know, we had a, a fellow in our church years ago, they moved to Kentucky, I believe. But anytime somebody was hurt, he called us up, or Pastor, we got to pray for so-and-so. You know, we got to pray. We just move towards people who were hurting in any way, shape, or form. You know, we got to pray. We got to pray. And I say, absolutely, because I saw that gift. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And there are others, like I said, they, they just, there are all kinds of marvelous gifts and they're by the Holy Spirit, amen. He's giving gifts unto men. And they, of course, we're talking about the spiritual gifts as well as natural gifts, the fruit of the Spirit, the, the, you know, amen. So, um, and we're to grow in all of these things. We're to, to use them and to grow in them. Hallelujah. So uh, here he is going to uh, say, and it, it almost sounds, the King James almost sounds like he's contradicting, but he's saying, my brothers, my sisters, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. So we're supposed to have that faith, but he says, but not with respect of persons. In other words, you are not anyone's judge. And the Bible says very, very severely, judge not lest ye be judged. Let a man or woman examine themselves. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and leave uh, any judgment to, to God. Praise God forever. So he says, with no, don't use our faith with respect of persons. And then it talks about, you know, treating people differently based on their 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 wealth based on their outward condition based on these other areas it says verse 4 are ye not then partial in yourselves and are become a judge of evil thoughts hearken my beloved brethren hearken my beloved brethren don't you love that has not, has not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him amen but ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which ye are called? If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. Amen? So, you know, they, I, I, I've said it countless times, but I'll just bring you back, help you to see the picture. You know, mass group of people came to Jesus. Some of them came to trick him. Some came hungry. And they said to him, Jesus, what's the most important thing? And I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, you know, we when we were younger, there was a company called E.F. Hutton. I don't remember if they were a financial group or what they were, but the commercial was that when E.F. Hutton talks, everybody listens. And the commercial was, you know, people are talking, they're chattering, and all of a sudden it says, you know, if he hath, if if Hutton speaks, everybody goes silent. And now they're listening. Because he's going to give them financial wisdom and, you know, creative ideas of how to become pro prosperous, okay? And so it was like, drop everything, all attention. And that's how I see they came to Jesus and they said, Jesus... What's the most important thing? And I'm convinced that it went completely silent. That people said, you know what? There's nothing more important right now than to hear what he says. And it's written for us in the word of God. He says that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, your mind, your might, all of you. And the second, love your neighbor as you love yourself. He says, in these two are all the law and the, and the, uh, I forget what the other word was, was uh, prophecies. Thank you. Amen? In, in that, in other words, this is, this is the most important thing. All the law and the prophecies all echo this. Love God with all your heart, with all, how much? All your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength everything you are, all everything you have, amen? Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So, and he says, do unto others as you would have them do to. These are ways that God is saying to us, that's the way of a Christian. That's the way Jesus lived his life. And that's the way that he expects us to live our lives, amen? When the woman that was caught in the act of adultery was brought before Jesus, you remember, they were going to stone her to death. And Jesus paused, and it's a little lengthy. You can read it. He, he wrote in the sand. We don't know what he wrote. If he wrote, he may have been just been praying. I don't know. But he got up and he said, you who have never, never sinned, cast the first stone. And each and every one of them were suddenly aware of their own sinfulness and dropped their rocks, and they went on their way. And Jesus said this to the woman, where are your accusers? To the woman. And she says, there are none. And then Jesus said, neither do I accuse you. And I've said it before, 
Was there one there in that assembly that had never sinned? Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ. So he said, he who's never sinned cast the first stone. So they all realized that they don't meet the condition, so they separated. But you know what? He met the condition. So he had every legal right to pick up a stone and crush her head. Are you with me? But that's not his spirit. That's not his heart. That's not who he is. And so instead, he says, where are your accusers? She said, there are none. He said, neither do I accuse you. Amen. Go your way and sin no more. So he tells her straight, I'm not going to condemn you because that's not who I am. It's not about me. So we have to say, that's not me either. Amen. But then he warned her very strictly. He says, go your way and sin no more. In other places, he, 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 he mentions, go your way and sin no more. Otherwise, something worse will come. Something, you know, that you certainly don't want will come. So it's about not only a change of, 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 of behavior, but it's a change of, of mindset, a change of lifestyle. Are you with me? And that's what James is bringing to us. It's not only, you know, I'm sorry because I got caught, but I have every intention of going out and doing it again. Well, the end result of that is going to be death. Either natural death or spiritual death. Are you listening? And so God says, no, I'm not going to condemn you, but go your way and sin no more. Get a, get a handle on it and do what's right, necessary to, to you know, renew your mind. I, you know, I love that, that story when Jesus crossed the ocean, remember? Uh, he crossed the sea. And the winds and the waves, you know, the whole story. And they went to the Gadarenes. And there, there was one man who was, who was lunatic. He was, he was so demon-possessed that the demons that he had uh, were a legion. I believe that's 20,000 demons. And, and when they, those demons were cast out of this one man, they went into a herd of swine, and the herd of swine went insane and jumped off a cliff into the water and drowned themselves. So it lets us know how bad this guy had it off, all right? that he would beat himself and mutilate himself and he was a deviant and sexual pervert and everything else. And if people came anywhere near him, he mutilated them, he defiled them sexually. He, did, he just had his way. He was totally out of it. All right? But when Jesus crossed the sea and he came to him and he cast the devils out of that man, the Bible says, and when he was clothed in his right mind. Hallelujah. And then he said to Jesus, Jesus, I want to follow you. And Jesus says, in a manner of speaking, follow me, but not physically. Because there is a job for you to do. Go out into your region, to this land, and tell everybody what great things God has done for you. And so he left. Jesus got in the boat and he went back. One man he went to. But when the apostles came to that region years later, they found a great contingency of believers who were strong in the Lord, who were in their right mind, who were growing in the things of God, who were, who were, who were maturing in the things of God. And you wonder, you think to yourself, where did they come from? How did that happen? Well, that one man who was clothed in his right mind because he came to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he went out and he shared what great things God had done for him. Amen. There was a radical behavior change and way of thinking and, and the way of acting and the way of speaking. Are you with me? And the word of God can do that for anybody. Hallelujah. Who met that man that day? The Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God made flesh. So when we say, you know, well, that was Jesus. Well, this is Jesus. And if his word worked then, it works now. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And our, 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 the focus of our attention should be allow this word to change the way I think, the way I act, the way I speak, the, the, the motivation of my heart, the attitudes of my life. Amen? Amen? You know, they asked... Uh, you know, Jesus focused on two things. And I, you know, 
pressed into these things, and there might be more to it, but, you know, Jesus' attitude was that of a servant. He said, I have not come to be served, but to serve, and to give my life as a ransom. So his whole life was to serve. Amen? To offer salvation to whosoever would receive it. To offer healing, to offer deliverance to whosoever would receive it. Didn't matter their state in life, didn't matter how desperate they were, didn't matter what color they were, didn't matter what, what gender they were, didn't matter anything. Amen? All who came to him. Amen? He, it was his desire to serve them. To serve them the word of God. To serve them the bread of life. To serve himself. He is the word of God. He is the bread of life. Are you with me? So our calling in life is to do the same thing. To have the attitude of a servant. And not to be served, but to serve. And to give our life, almost a matter of speaking, as a ransom. Give our life away. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says that Jesus, you know, was moved with compassion. So for me, it very clearly describes his motive. What's in it for me? The answer is nothing. Compassion is what's in it for you. How can I help you? How can I help you? How can I bless you? How can I, you know, uh, support you? How can I help you to be better? Amen? Hallelujah. And so if we keep these in mind that it's not about you, it never was about you, it's always about Jesus. And we're here to serve Jesus to everybody we come to in kindness, because Jesus is kind and faithful and, and patience and mercy. Hallelujah. And then, to, and then to serve it to the people that we share this planet with in obedience to and love your neighbor as you, you, know, as you love yourself. Or, or as the second one says, love, love your neighbor. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So uh, let's continue a little bit more. Um, let's see. All right. Right, in verse 8. If you fulfill the royal law, listen to what is called the royal law, the law of the kingdom. Amen. According to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well. But if you, verse 9, but if you have respect of persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Amen. Now we're talking about words. Don't forget. Many people would never, they would say, I would never kill a person. I, I, you know, catch flies and I let them go. If I see a, a little mouse, I, I go and put a little cover on it. I would never even think of trapping it. And I put a slide and I take it outside and I let it go. That's all good. That's admirable, right? But how many know there are other ways of killing? And one of the worst ways is with our mouths. Speaking ill of people, being disrespectful, you know, um, gossip. Are you listening? How do you, you kill a person's reputation? You kill a person's good name. You you endeavor to to uh, you know divide and and cause cause pain and hurt, and 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 some would say hey, do it in the name of the Lord. No. Are you listening? So here it says, you know, very, very clearly that um, we are to love thy neighbor as, as thyself. Hallelujah. Treat people like you would want to be treated. Amen. Hallelujah. Be con considerate of people. Let them think to yourself, how would you be if the, if the, the uh, circumstances were, were, were changed? How would you want to be treated? How would you want to be, you know, spoken to? And, uh, and the rest. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Um, so it says here, um, for he that saith, do not commit adultery, said also do not kill. Now if thou committest no adultery, yet thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye. What are we talking about? Words. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, 
that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Verse 14, For what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. So yes, he's focusing on being kind to people and clothing people and feeding people, but he still hasn't changed his topic. He's talking about the attitudes of our hearts and the words of our mouth. Amen? It says here, um, even so, if, for if it hath not works, is dead. It, excuse me, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yet a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Verse 21, Was not Abraham our father justified by works? when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Amen? What, what exactly would you say verse 21 is? It says here, Was not Abraham our father justified by works, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? You know what that is? Obedience. Obedience to the word of God. Obedience to the word of God. And say, I can stand here and say it a thousand, ten thousand, a million times. Obedience to the word of God. That is our lot in life. Amen? To hear the word, observe to do according to all that is written therein. Amen? My disciples, it says here, if you hear my word and do it, you're my disciples indeed. Amen? When you hear my word and you do it, you're my disciple. That's what it means to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Anything else that people come up with, you know, ideas and stuff, teachings and stuff that float around about what it means to be a Christian, that's what it means to be a Christian. Amen? To hear God's word and to obey. To just do what he says to do. Jesus says, I don't do my will. I only do the will of my Father. I don't say what I want to say. I only say what I hear my father say. I, I don't do what I want to do. I only do what I see my father do. Amen? I, I have made up my mind to be a representative of the kingdom of God, of almighty God. And that's our calling, my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God forever. And, and the way to do it, so you don't misunderstand, is to put the word of God in. Hallelujah. We talked about Sunday. We've been talking about it for a couple weeks. It's the manner in which we hear. The importance of the Word of God. What value do we place on the Word of God? There, there's a lot of value we place on a lot of things. You know, we go to a doctor and the doctor says, you know, take this medicine three times a day. We do what the doctor says because we place value on what that doctor is saying. And the same thing with others. If, you know, if, if a, a police officer pulls you over and says, you know, that you, uh, I have you clocked at 50 and a 35, he's going to say to you, keep the speed down to 35. He's going to give you a scolding if you don't get a ticket. Now it's up to you and me to abide by what he says. Are you with me? To, put, to place value on it. There are people that lose their driver's license, they, they lose the, the, their car, they, they, they have pay massive fines. Why? Because they didn't take the, the judge's word seriously. They, 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 you know, they, they blew him off or whatever the case may be. There's, they, they, it, it's all about what, what value do you place on what you're hearing? Somebody knowledgeable, you know, nowadays we're all, not all, but many people are are you know Google and YouTube or whatever 
my, uh, my, my washer machine stopped working. So I'm gonna Google real quick and type in, you know, my kind and, and, and see what they say. And if the guy says, do this, that, and the other thing, then I go do this, that, and the other thing. Because he knows better than I do when it comes to washing machines. And I, now, honestly, I fixed my own dryer once because it stopped, it stopped heating. So I went on YouTube and I found somebody who had the same model. They told me what to do. You have to do this, you have to do this, take this off. We did that, Nick and I were there. We did it together. I bought that one piece, put it in there, and I pressed the button, fired up, beautiful. I said, that's great. Sure better than buying a new dryer. And the, you know, other things as well. So we look to these people and we consider, you know, what they have to say, I'm gonna follow, because I place value on what he says. He's a certified GE or whatever it is, mechanic or, or whatever, or, or, or they're this or that, or they're, they're a licensed carpenter, or they're a licensed electrician, or they're, you know, they're a doctor, or they're a lawyer. No disrespect, they're all, you know, they have value. They have, there, there's, there's um, you know, there's, there's uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, I guess, but um, authority in what they have to say. But there is no more authority than the word of God. The greatest authority, the final authority. So when we treat the word of God with, with less than we would treat these other authorities, we're, we're making a horrible mistake. We should treat the word of God with the utmost authority. In other words, Lord, whatever you say is right, and I'm going to do that. Because, you know, pleasing the judge is good, and pleasing the doctor is good, and pleasing the lawyer is good, and pleasing, you know, these other individuals that we consider to have authority in our lives is all good. But none of them hold a candle to pleasing God. Amen? And the Bible says, without faith, which is hear what he says and obey. That's what faith is. To hear what he says and obey. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For those who come to him must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen? Hallelujah. And so, you know, here we, we call it the, the royal law. Praise God. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Praise God. Amen. Uh, let me see where we are at and uh, we'll see how much more we can do. A little bit more. So, uh, we read down to the bottom, did we? Yeah, Abraham, we spoke of Abraham in verse 21. Hallelujah. Was not Abraham, verse 21, was not Abraham our father justified? Amen. Counted just, considered right behavior, behavior that pleased God. Hallelujah. What's it say? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? when he offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. Now, I have said this before. It's on my heart. You would not tolerate. I don't think you would. Everybody's in a different place. But many of us would never tolerate four-letter words in our presence. If people, hopefully not us, or you, I should say, because not us, but not, I'm judging or condemning, but that doesn't happen in my home. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my children don't swear ever. And, uh, and we don't swear. And we, you know, uh, I, I was, uh, got a job once working uh, in, a, in a factory to make extra money. And um, the people that were there were very foul mouthed. And the first couple of times I heard the F-bomb, it was like I got a punch in my chest. It was so offensive to me. It was so, because I hadn't heard it so long. And, and, and so I, I would say to them, you know, please stop with the language. And, and if I had to separate myself from them, I would separate myself from them. Are you with me? Yes. But as far as God is concerned, there are four letter words that he can't stand. And those are the words that we know, but also C-A-N-T, I can't. W O N T. I won't. When it comes to obedience, God says, do this. And we say, I can't. That's the most profane, vile thing that we could ever say to God because what does He say? 
you can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? It's not you doing it in your own strength. It's you doing it with His strength. Amen? When God says, you know, He leads you and He, and he moves upon your heart to do something hard, to give, to be a blessing, to reach out to somebody, maybe even who's hurt you, and you say, I won't. I can't. I'm not doing it. When God speaks to us, and you know, with that still small voice or by the word of God, and we say, yeah, but. It's only a three-letter word, but very profane, very foul before God. And that kind of language should not be tolerated. Amen? Because God despises that kind of language. Why? Because he says you can. Amen? You're more than a conqueror. I've already placed my word on you and you are successful. You can do all things. There's nothing impossible to those who believe. Am I preaching right? Amen? Well, that's impossible. No, it's not impossible. Don't blaspheme God by saying that's impossible because I can't do it. You were never asked to do it. Amen? You were asked to simply obey what he says. There are times where, you know, I have learned my own experience when God speaks to me. And this is the way, you know, many other people have commented this, the same thing. People that I value, trust my elders in the, in the word of God and the things of God. You know, when God speaks to you, don't hesitate. Obey immediately. Because the longer you hesitate, the more opportunity you have for the devil to talk you out of it. You start to consider all these other things. We're talking about Abraham, and in Romans chapter 4, I believe it is, it says Abraham, and it tells you how he operated, and his faith was pleasing to God, that he refused to, to look at certain circumstances, situations. He refused to look at how old he was. He refused to look at how old his wife was and how barren that she was. He refused to, to see the, 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 you know, the emptiness of the situation. And he began to tell everybody around, my name is Abraham, father of many nations. Why? Because you feel like it? No. Why? Because, you know, you're just talking through your hat, so to speak. What you're wishing for is no, because God told me. And I'm going to do what God says. I'm not calling myself Abram any longer. I am Abraham. And everywhere he went, God told him, come, come, I'll help you. He says, look at the stars. That's going to be your descendants, your spiritual descendants, like the stars of the heavens. And your natural descendants, come look at the sand. And, and you know, live in the desert. Can you number the sand? So God gave him help. So every time Abraham was hesitant, he would look up at the stars. And the word of God would flood back to him. Amen. And he kept hand, his hand on his, on his pulse, checking how his heart was doing. You know? Hallelujah. And every time he, was, he would look down at the sand and says, Lord, God spoke to me. So when God told him, he, they gave birth to that son, by the way. You know, it was amazing. And they named him, he, I told a story, I don't have time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow out the clock. But, you know, Sarah was devastated. She couldn't bear a child. As far as the culture in which she lived, she had no value, no use. She couldn't bear her, her, her husband, who was the patriarch. You know, the wealthiest man on the, on the planet, pretty much, at that time. And if she couldn't bear him a son, then what purpose is she? What value is she? And she lived with that, and the people around her mocked her, scorned her to her face, behind her back. Amen? But when she, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, you need to read it, 6, you know, it talks about that in Hebrews 11, 11. It says, Sarah received strength to conceive, conceive seed, though she was past the age, because she believed. Is that what I'm saying? i got to turn to it quickly. I don't want to misquote it. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Amen? She judged him. Remember when the word first came, she laughed in her tent. She was like, are you kidding me? You know, it hasn't happened up to now. What are you possibly thinking? 
but somewhere between her laughing in the tent and her delivering a child, she got right. She began to think about and focus on, but God said, and I know how I feel, and I know what everybody else is saying, and I see the smirks, and they're laughing at me, and all the rest, but God said, and, and here, not only did she receive strength, but so much strength that she could conceive a child in a dead womb. That womb became alive. You know, it's so filled with miracles. But God is saying, this is the way you bring miracles into your life. Amen? Judge him faithful who promised. And, and I don't have time to tell the rest of the story. You know, it says here, Therefore, verse 12, sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand by, it, by which is by the seashore innumerable. Amen? It talks about the faith of, of Abraham in Romans chapter 4. There are certain things you've got to resist, you can't look at, you've got to make up your mind. God's word is true, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care how it looks, I don't care how it feels, I don't care how long it takes. God's word is true, amen? And that the Bible says that pleases God. Faith pleases God, are you with me? So here, the, the boy is born, they name him Isaac. You know what Isaac means? Laughter. You know why that's so important? Because she hadn't had laughter in her tent for as long back as she can remember. And now she's not only carrying her son, she's carrying the word of God made flesh in a manner of speaking. The promise that God made to her. She's holding him in her hands. His name is Isaac. And God says that through this one, this child, Isaac, okay, all the nations will be blessed. And when Isaac gets of age, God speaks to Abraham and says, take Isaac, this one, up on the mountain and offer him to me. And what happened? Did Abraham run the other direction? No. Was that an easy thing to be asked? Oh my God, can't think of anything harder. And yet Abraham made plans immediately and went on his way. He didn't tell anybody. He didn't tell his wife. He had been on the mountain to sacrifice with her, with her son many times. He thought they were just going to go sacrifice a, an animal and worship God and come back home like they've done many times before. And this time it was different. So they go up and sure enough, you know, Isaac says to the father, here is the wood for the fire. We've done this before. Usually we bring a lamb, the best one from the flock. Oh, where's the lamb? And Abraham says the Lord will provide himself a lamb. The Lord, a ram, male. The Lord will provide himself a ram. Read it. What was Abraham believing? That God would provide himself a ram. Amen? But was he going to sacrifice his son? Yes. He was going to obey God. But you have to listen to the words coming out of his mouth. He didn't say, all is lost. The son that I love, God is going to take him away from me. You know? You never know what God's going to do. He giveth and taketh away. You, know, you never, you know, God, God is, he, you know, all this other junk. What did he say? He said, my son and I are going up to worship. And my son and I are coming down off the mountain. Even if I have to plunge the knife into my son, God will raise him from the dead because God said that through this boy would all the nations of the earth be blessed. So I'm going to plunge a knife into him and kill him, but I'm not coming off the mountain unless I come down with my son, so God's going to raise him from the dead. How many know that's faith? And notice, Abraham didn't take the word of God lightly. He, he allowed the word of God to be the final word above what he felt, what he thought. You know, could you imagine the voices he was hearing? Come on. You think you're alone to hear these voices? No. Can you imagine the voices he was hearing? What are you doing? What's your wife going to say? What are all the people going to say? What are you going to do when you come down off the mountain without your son? Are you kidding me? You're really going to kill your son? This one you waited all your... Can you... Come on. Do you ever hear these voices too? Yeah, we all do. But what is the victory? Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And faith is saying what God says. God, you said, therefore I believe it. I'm not moved. I won't, I won't deviate. I won't change. I will obey without hesitation. 
Amen. That's what it's all about. Hallelujah, my brothers and sisters. And, and, and what happened? In a manner of speaking, you know, God considered that Abraham actually killed his son. Now, some people may say, well, you know, that was the easy way out. No, the Bible says God considered, a, considered Isaac dead because he knew that Abraham would do it. Is God able, if Abraham went to plunge his sword into his son and slit him, was God able to heal him and raise him from the dead and continue to use his life? Absolutely, no question. But God considered what Abraham did done. And in a prophetic way, Abraham, by him obeying God to surrender his son, now set precedent for God to send his son. And that him, God will provide himself a ram. In that story, you know what happened. The son was taken off. There was a ram in the thicket. They sacrificed the ram, right? But I want you to know when the time came, the Bible says in the fullness of time, God made a body for his son. And he lived his life, amen, filled with compassion, serving, being a blessing. And then he went to the cross. And he was slain for the sins of the whole world, the Lamb of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So Jesus, of course, walked in complete obedience and has called us to follow in his footsteps, to be believers. We're not doubters. We're believers. We, we don't come with our own agenda. We are coming to do your will, O God. Amen? To do your will, O God. To do what you say. To obey you in all of our ways. To give you lordship over each and every one of our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 We have uh, finished our time. We are so grateful for your attention here tonight. And let's pray together. Father, we love you so much. And we're so grateful for times of refreshing in your presence, in your word. And uh, it, it, though it is uh, strong and though it bears a, a, a tremendous amount of authority, we all sense that tonight. Uh, it, it means nothing if we don't take what we've heard and uh, put it to practice in our lives. So we will not uh, despise your word. We will not uh, turn our hearts from it, but we will allow your word uh, to have its way in our minds, in our hearts, in our mouths, in our lives. And uh, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, O oh God. Praise you, Lord, for, for your kindness tonight, your mercy, your grace. And, and Father, for the deposit of faith that you have placed in each and every one of us. We will take it. We will cultivate it. We are good ground and we will uh, allow the word of God to water it. And we each of us will uh, bear fruit. We will bear fruit for the kingdom of God and for your honor and glory. Uh, as always, Lord, we pray traveling mercies as we return to our homes. May our homes be blessed. Our sleep be sweet. We praise you. Bless you for it in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you here in the church. We appreciate you coming. Uh, we'll see you next time, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. God bless you. Thank you.